The title of my message tonight, Living Stones. So we are God's building. Living stones made alive in Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. That means that we are we were rejected by men, but we are now useful to God. And so useful are we to God that God decided to make us his habitation. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency. Somebody scream the last three words. One to go. I can't hear you. Our sufficiency is of who? So in yourself, you are insufficient. It doesn't make you feel depressed. It doesn't make you work with low self-esteem. It's a reality. So if people insult you based on an insufficiency they see, they are right if they are referring to just you. Because we are sufficient, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Go on. Who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament. Somebody say able ministers. He has made us. He put his ability in us. And it is by that ability that we can bring to birth and cause to bring forth the purpose of God divinely ordained for our lives. Not of the letter but of the spirit. For the letter killeth. But the spirit giveth light. For the code of the Lord kills. But the Holy Spirit makes alive. And that's why we are called living stones. Despised and rejected of men as stones. But chosen by God and made alive by his spirit. We are living stones. Living stones. Now let me talk to us briefly about what I call basic facts of God's dealings with man. Basic facts of God's dealings with men. It is important that we know how God deals with men. Very, very important. Because the perception of your life and how you will live and exist how you will function on earth is based on the perception you have of your life. And for you to truly understand your life, you need to understand how God deals with men. Because God created man. Many Christians suffer today all kinds of things in the hand of the devil. Generally because they don't understand God's dealings with men. So sometimes when they seem trapped in a particular situation, they think God has forgotten them. That's why the Bible says that the ways of God are past finding out. Cannot be comprehended. So it is as we grow and walk with God for Christians who are serious about working with God, developing a relationship with God and knowing God. I'm not talking about Christians who all they want is tea and bread. That's not Christianity. There's actually no difference with due respect between that one and the man of the world. There's no difference. If it's all about tea and bread. Am I saying that tea and bread is not good? No. But you just imagine how frustrating life as a believer will be if it is always about what you can receive from God. Why don't we talk about who or what our responsibility now is in the kingdom because of what we have received. That's why a lot of Christians are frustrated when they are trapped in physical circumstances and conditions. And that's why God brought this message tonight as a healing and a reorientation to the body of Christ. Basic facts about God's dealings with men. I'll give you four and then we'll pray. Number one, well, some sentences are long, so you make sure you listen carefully to write. Men are God's methods. Men are God's institutions upon the face of the earth. Those are two statements in one. These are facts. Alright? Basic facts. 
in understanding the dealings of God with men. Number one, men are God's methods. I think it was E.M. Bounds who said that. Men are God's institutions upon the face of the earth. What is an institution? An institution simply is, you don't need to write that down, but you know, just for understanding's sake, an institution is an organization um, or an edifice that was established um, for to acquaint society about a kind of knowledge. So God is so vast and yet needs to be understood. He is infinite in his wisdom and his knowledge. Romans 11.33 tells us that the riches of his knowledge and his wisdom are great. Yet he needs to be understood. Because the only way man can function in accordance to divine purpose in his, is in understanding first his maker. So when God created man, he created men as institutions that will reveal different fragments of himself. That will bring or awaken in creation, what we call nature. That will awaken in creation and in nature the multifaceted wisdom of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 in verse 10 that through the church might be made known to principalities and powers the manifold wisdom. Manifold means many-sided, multifaceted. It's so wide. When God created man, the intention for that design was that man will reveal the many side of the wisdom of God. This invisible God that is great and powerful, he will be made known in smaller fragments of knowledge through the institution called man. You want to understand the plan of God, the schemes of God, how God does things. It is embedded as a revelation in the life of men. Men. So you go to a family generations before, all of them stricken in poverty with all kinds of satanic curse and yoke. And God goes to that family and raise a global multi-billionaire. How? That's the question. Men are God's methods. So you, studying that guy's life will show you how God can pick someone from the dust. He can pick a needy from the miry clay and set him among princes. What revelation is your life offering to your world? And for some of you, the revelation is ongoing. But it, you are, because of your haste, you are trying to spoil the work. You are trying to stop what is being made manifest. You know, light is appreciated more in darkness. Uh -huh. That's why God allowed you to go through a level of shame. Because the glory that will follow will be better appreciated when there was a record of shame. I'm talking to somebody. The Bible says we are his building. His dwelling place. There's a song we used to sing those days. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, we thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Number two, God has always been known. God has always been known to use human vessels. It's kind of long, but I'll, I'll be very slow so we can get it. Number two, basic facts about God's dealings with man. God has always been known to use human vessels. God has always been known to use human vessels who are seemingly unqualified. Who are seemingly unqualified. Seemingly is spelled seemingly. Seemingly 
unqualified. If you are here, say amen. amen. By human standards. Seemingly unqualified by human standards. So let me read it out for you to get it. God has always been known to use human vessels who are seemingly unqualified by human standards. Please be seated. God has always been known to use human vessels who are seemingly unqualified by human standards. Remember where we are coming from. Number one, that men are God's methods. They are God's institutions. So, number two now is that God, he finds pleasure in using human vessels that are unqualified by human standards. I use the word seemingly because it appears that they are unqualified. But don't be fooled by the shell. The outer look. No. Why do you think they were looking for the strength of Samson? Do you really think Samson was muscular? Maybe he was like me. They won't look for his strength. If he was muscular, they will know that this one is a bodybuilder. They say, is this not Jesus of Nazareth? Whose brothers are James and... His, these are his people there. And the Bible says, they did not believe him. They insulting Elisha. Bad head. They didn't know that something had dropped. And Elisha cursed them in the name of God. Bears came out from nowhere and ate them. Don't be fooled by how the person looks. God is always in the business of using vessels that seem unqualified. He specializes in that. Because if the vessel looks strong and God wants to reveal him stre his strength, he will take the glory for himself. He will say, my muscles brought it to me. He said, for the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, nor bread for the wise man. He said, let not the wise glory in his, his wisdom, nor the strong in his strength, or the rich in his riches. He said, but let him that glory, glory in this, that he knoweth and understands me. Jeremiah 9 verse 23 and 24. Jeremiah 1, 4 verse 9. I want to read some of you. This is you. You will see yourself in this scripture now. He said, Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then this is you now. He said, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. That's you now. That's what you've always been saying about yourself. That's why every time they give you something to do, you are always stepping back because you feel you are not able. So I'm showing you you. So that something can be awakened inside of you tonight. He said, but the Lord said to me, do not say. Or simply put, shut up. Don't say I am a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Go on. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. I love verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. That mouth that you say you can't speak, he said, touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. God will touch somebody's mouth today. I'm telling you. The way you are, God loves you like that. And he wants to use you like that. Forget about the things that are needed. He is the all-sufficient God. He said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That's what keeps you humble for him. Don't you realize that in the last three months that you have been broke financially, you have been, that's the most humble mo moments of your life. No, you check yourself. You are growing in humility. Not, it's not like that's the only way to be humble. You can be rich and still be humble. But there was no other way God could use. And that humility is a virtue needed for what God will do for you in the future or through you. Number three, God qualifies those he calls by training. God qualifies those he calls by training, building and equipping them his own way. You will need to know his will. You will need to understand him. Let him that glory, glory in this that he knoweth and understands me. No room for a novice. 
but you need to commit yourself what did he tell them in Matthew chapter 4 Jesus talking to his first disciples that he chose he said follow me and I will make you God is a maker better than any potter in this life and where you are is one part of that construction so you and the people around you should not give up on you somebody say ah I've tried this particular thing I'm struggling with how long will I continue I've prayed I've fasted I've done this and that and you are almost giving up just wait give God time give God time it will be that your own deliverance will take a process because God will now use you to become an instrument of deliverance to everyone that will suffer from that particular perdition some of you pray for people and they get their healing instantly but your own you will have to see every stage of the recovery you even need to take panadol and add to it to be healed and now you are looking at yourself as if you don't have faith can I tell you something just before we misunderstand scripture faith is the conviction you have about God's word and his ability that does not change regardless of the outcome if you believe that God is a provider and he provides it does not change your faith you will still keep believing that he is a provider even when he doesn't provide holding on to that conviction to death that is faith Job 33 verse 4 says the spirit of God is in me the breath of the almighty has given me life he puts his spirit in you he puts his wisdom in you he makes you into the man that he has called you to be and then finally number four God in using men comma God in using men restores the original value or purpose for which they were made God in using men restores the original value or purpose for which they were made it is only God who knows your true and original purpose and so when you allow God to use you when you allow him to take hold of your life that is when your life will be used in accordance to its perfect purpose anytime a thing is not used according to why it was created it is being abused God is the only one that will possess your life and not abuse you it restores the original value and purpose all of a sudden you realize this is why I was born because now that it is God's business you are doing there is a joy and a pleasure that you can't explain that surges from inside of you before now you were used to getting joy happiness pleasure from outside but because you are committed to God's cause there is a joy that proceeds from inside of you like a well of living water so you don't you, you are not concerned whether you are you have much or you have little as long as I keep doing this every day it's like this is why I'm alive Paul said in his words he said this one thing I do it restores the original value you know that this is the reason for why you were born Jesus said for this purpose came I into the world it's only God that can use you the devil will play you play you play you to destruction the devil will only want to take advantage of the gifts and the fabrications of God inside of you use it to adorn his kingdom and after that discard you as tissue paper only God restores the original purpose the original value so you are sleeping in that boy's house why because he's paying your school fees because he's giving you little little stipends to survive in school and so you now think he's your provider he's your benefactor he's everything that's why you can't come out of that disgusting relationship that has reduced you to a a bad woman a harlot But I came to tell you, come out of it. I don't care even if the man is here now listening to us. Come out of it. Who told you that God cannot provide for you? Was that what you were created for? To be someone's pleasure tool? 
you don't you don't you don't allow the devil ridicule uh, ridicule your life and turn it to a mess look at what he's already doing in your life god is the one the only one that restores the original purpose when he takes hold of you and he begins to use you there's something he does with your life that tells everybody that this is why this one came to the world and in that state he becomes your provider he caters for you he takes care of you the bible says that the, the, the birds in the air neither sow nor reap he said but your heavenly father takes care of them how much more are you who live to fit Jire, you are enough. Jire, you are enough. Sing it four times. Jire, you are enough. Say, Jire, you are enough. Jire, say. In every circumstance, Shira, you are enough. Hold on, let me minister to somebody. Play strings. I want to minister to somebody with this part of the song. You have been feeling rejected and discontent where you are. I want to know that you have more than enough with you. Just listen to this. I will be content. In every circumstance, I will be content. In every situation, I will be content. In every problem around me, I will be content. In every face of hunger, I will be content. In every circumstance, Jire, you are enough. Listen to me. What is more important in my life now is what I'm doing. Oh. It's not any of the things that I can acquire. I love those things and I know God will bring it. I was not here before. But to think that I will exchange this for anything, put a pistol on my head and pull the trigger. I'm telling you. Even if that gun points at me now, I'm ready to die. Let me just tell you the truth. But there's no difference. You see, my being on earth here, eh, I'm, at the same time, I'm in the heavens. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. You kill me, you only set me free. But I will exchange this for any other thing. God forbid. How do they say God forbid in Hausa? This is my conviction. What's your conviction? Stand up, let's pray. I will be content in every set. Even with the carryover. I will be content Listen to me. Contentment is different from satisfaction. You are not satisfied that there is more you can get, but you are content even with this one. That's why Job will say, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. No need to fast track what, whatever it is. I will be content. Let me let me prophesy. Every circumstance, I will be content. In every situation, I will be content. In every trouble around me, I will be content. When all hope seems but lost. I will be content without a job for 10 years. 
I will be content even when I am failing. I will be content in every circumstances. Jaira. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth and talk to God tonight. Open your mouth and talk to God. You were chosen for a specific divine purpose. And this purpose must be your pursuit. You were set apart for a divine purpose. You are God's method. He uses you. Even when men look down on you. Even when you seem unqualified by human standards. Yet he trains you. He equips you. He builds you. He qualifies you his own way. And he restores the original purpose for your creation. Come on, talk to God somebody. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. I lay me down and I sleep and I won't. I won't for the Lord He sustains me. Many are they that be that troubles me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that say of me there is no help for him. There is no help for him, God. 